Hi students, Mrs. Drew here. Today we are going to talk about the perfect passive participle. First, let's look at how we make the perfect passive participle. Participles come from verbs. You will need to know the four principal parts of a verb in order to make um, a perfect passive participle out of it. Go to the fourth principal part, another name, the supine, and take off the us ending. Sometimes it will be um. You, when you take that off, what is left is the supine stem. You will need the supine stem plus endings to create the perfect passive participle, in short, PPP. So, in an example, it looks like this. Narat plus usa um is naratus, narata, naratum which means having been told or simply told. In another example, it's guest is the supine stem, us a um is the ending, together, gestus, gesta, gestum, which means having been worn, having been carried, or simply worn and carried. Now we will look at how we use these participles in a sentence. Remember, participles have an adjective feature. They describe nouns in number, gender, and case. It is true with the perfect passive participles, too. Let's look at the examples. Narata is the perfect passive participle in the first sentence. How do I know that? I recognize narata as the fourth principal part of the verb naru, narare, naravi, naratus. Narata describes fabula in number, gender, and case. Both are feminine, singular, and nominative. This is called the adjective feature of the perfect passive participle. Let's look at the second sentence. Can you guess what is the perfect passive participle in this second sentence? You're right if you said gesta. We know that because we remember that gesta is the fourth principal part of the verb gero, gerere, gessi, gestus. Can you tell what adjective gesta, PPP, describes? You are right if you said arma. Arma and gesta agree in number, gender and case. They are both plural, nominative, neuter. You need to notice one more important thing about the PPP. Many times passive verb forms like the perfect passive participle will have an ablative case by them. This ablative case will express by whom or by what the action was done. In the first sentence is a magistra, by the teacher. It has been, the story has, has been told by the teacher. In the second example, it's a hostibus, which is by the enemies. So the uh, weapons had been carried by the enemies. Now that you know how to recognize and translate the perfect passive participle, let's look at one more important feature of it. We said that participles function as adjectives in a sentence and agree with a noun in number, gender, and case. That means that they have to use a declension table to do that. Do you have a guess which declension they are using? You were right if you said first and second. The clue was in their endings. A stands for first declension. Us and um stands for second declension. Together it's a first and second declension adjective. Notice the way the perfect passive part participle and the noun decline together. Remember that the perfect passive participle is a first and second declension adjective. Here you can tell that it's using the first declension endings. Why? Because it's agreeing with the first declension noun. So it's rightfully using a first declension ending. In this case, 
the endings are all the same. It's an easy agreement because the endings will agree as well, not just the number, gender and case. And that's it about the perfect passive participle.